Pregame.com. Wednesday night, we're back in Dayton, Ohio for another of the plus four play-in games. We're looking at South Florida versus California. I'm Marco D'Angelo. I'm joined by Stephen Nover. Opening line on this, Stephen, California minus two and a half. First thing I got to say, and I, I'm a little bit irritated, okay? You know, we, sometimes we do our rants of the week, but we're going to incorporate it here. The NCAA committee explain to me how does California get into this tournament and Washington doesn't. Please explain that to me. Can't do it. You know, if you're going to go two in the Pac-12, which I don't think you even should, the Pac-12 was I think so the, weak. I think the Pac-12 was horrendous this so, year. So, you know, it's debatable if you even have two in the Pac-12. But if you do it, <laughs> I mean, Cal, they don't win the conference tournament. They don't win the conference. Yeah, and there's a team that wins the conference yeah. title and is sitting, at, you know, not in. Yeah. Obviously, Colorado gets in because they won the conference tournament. I know they want to have the emphasis on the conference tournaments, but, geez, I mean, a body of work, you go 14-4 and four in the conference, Washington does, wins, yeah. the, wins the conference yeah. title. It's a three-month body of work versus a three-day body yeah. of work, yeah. and, and they're sitting at home. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't understand it, and it's not like... I think this is the first time in history that first a time yeah major to six that a, a major yeah. one of the six mm -hmm. major conferences yeah. has a, a team win their yeah. their title during a regular season and not get in. I just think it's a travesty. And this California team, they're the favorite two and a half now. I'll play devil's advocate because I, I know you've got a pick on this side, and I'm, I'm going to actually agree with you. But I got to do your yeah. role and play devil's okay. advocate for a second. Do you think California comes in here with a chip on their shoulder because everybody is questioning you don't belong? Well, they may have a chip on their shoulder, Marco, but they're not very good. <laughs> and they're not playing very well. You know, they're on a down cycle. Now, you can maybe debate, does South Florida deserve to be in here? Well, I think South Florida deserves to be here more than Cal, for sure. And uh, I'm very attracted to South Florida as an underdog. You're talking about a Big East team, and not just a Big East team. You're talking about the best defensive team in the Big East. You know, they're an ugly team to watch. You, they're, you, you, know, they're, you said it right there. Yeah. That, that's note number seven for me on this game. South Florida is getting a bad rap because they play an ugly style of yeah. basketball. Nobody wants to watch a game. They've had games in the 40s this year. Okay? I mean, they're taking basketball back. <laughs> 30 years, <laughs> okay? Yeah. But no, you see these like 46-44 finals and go, was this a halftime score? You know, is this? <laughs> but th that's what they've done. In, in fact, Stephen, they went seven straight games to end the season in which they scored themselves 58 points or less. Seven straight games. One of those games was an overtime game mm -hmm. to, to get to 53 against Notre Dame. Uh, and several of the games were in the 40s. But amazingly enough, when you say a team went seven straight games and didn't hit the 60 mark, you'd say, okay, what was their record in that seven games? One and six? You know, mm -hmm. They were four and three. Yeah. And they lost one of the games in overtime. Yeah. So, I mean, this team... They frustrate, you know, excuse my friend, they frustrate the hell out of you when you play them mm -hmm. because people don't want to play that style of basketball. Yeah, they've had some bad losses. Uh, South Florida, they've lost to Auburn and, and Penn State, and that looks bad on the resume. But the bottom line here, Marco, I don't think there's really a team out there that, that looks forward to playing South Florida. No. I mean, what a physical team, tough team to match up against, a really an oddball type team. And uh, in this matchup... Uh, against Cal. I, I don't like the Pac-12 at all this year, and uh, I, I think you got to go with the Big East team here. You know, the Big East is getting, you know, wrapped that they weren't as strong this year as they've been. So they the get past. nine instead of ten or something, <laughs> yeah, okay. you know. Yeah, I, I mean, let's face it, yeah, the Big East, it, it's a deeper conference. Let, yeah. Let's start with it. But let's go back to that defense for a second for South Florida, Stephen. When you get into tournament time, and we're going to go old school with you, go back to the glory days of Temple, they used to frustrate the hell out yeah. of teams with their defense yeah. and Don mm -hmm. Chain, you know, yeah. those defensive schemes, because you get these teams that come out of these conferences, mm -hmm. that they never see that kind, yeah. and it's hard to prepare for. Yeah. Another one, remember uh, 
Princeton, you mm -hmm. know, you sure. pass, 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 yeah. backdoor yeah. cut, yeah. And, you know. Yeah. It, it, it frustrates them, and that's what California is going to have to deal with here. Yeah. They don't see this at all in the Pac-12. Yeah. Those teams you mentioned, Tempo and Princeton, uh, not the your ordinary ordinary run of uh, type of team. So they're they're especially they're are their most dangerous in the first round games. Right, and you come back with the short prep. Um, I like them. You know, it's an even more of an advantage that this game is the play in one of the play in games rather than the Thursday or Friday game mm -hmm. because it's you know a couple days less to prepare. You know, if they had, if this game was on Friday, you got you know the full week almost to, you know, yeah. look at game mm -hmm. field, get prepared. Yeah. I just don't, and plus, let's not forget, California's coming all the way from the West Coast yeah. to play in yeah. the Eastern time zone in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, good, they're gonna, good they're gonna yeah. They're going to lose a half a day in travel. Yeah, yeah, no, good, good point. And uh, I've never seen the Pac-12 uh, weaker than it, than it was this year. Can you ever recall this is, weaker? This I, is I the can't. This is the worst I've, in in. The Pac-12 in basketball, you know, generally, you know, was always rich in tradition. Yeah. With, you know, you, you had UCLA there. And I always thought it had been underrated. You know, they never would get the East Coast press or anything. But this year, it's, I've never seen it this bad, Marco. It, it is bad. And we're going to actually, we're going to be talking about another Pac-12 team uh, mm -hmm. in a later video. And uh, I got, what do, you, what do you have here for South Florida? Do you, you see them winning this game out, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a short spread. I, I like South Florida. And so obviously, since I like South Florida, I figure, you know, you probably got to look to the under, you know. And Kale has an under tendency, too. Um, Kale's gone under nine of the last 11 times in their non-conference, the last um, 11 non-conference games. And um, so I think it's going to be low scoring. It's going to be one of those ugly ones, you know, maybe... Uh, uh, South Florida, something like, you know, 50 to 44, something like that. <laughs> something ugly again, you know. A barn and, burner. Yeah. Um, well, I agree with you. Um, I actually, my numbers, I have South Florida uh, winning outright by three. Um, the thing is, the way their style is, they, they're they never really out of ball games usually, mm -hmm. and they never really usually blow anybody away. So yeah. this is one of those ones that uh, it's going to come down to the to the wire, and uh, I think they, you know, win it. And the other benefit, Stephen, to a game like this, um, and it'll be my last uh, point on the game, is that when you play a style like this that's low scoring, and tight, most of their games, as I said, are close scoring mm -hmm. games so you have that pressure cooker all the time mm -hmm. where you know a lot of teams they don't and especially when you get into the tournament where it's mm -hmm. one and done mm -hmm. you get down to a tight ball game that's like almost every game for South Florida mm -hmm. so if it is tight late they're going to be more used to playing where every possession mm -hmm. means the game, mm -hmm. whereas California doesn't. So mm -hmm. another added advantage, I feel, for South Florida. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Stephen Nover's official free pick is South Florida. I'm going to give him an assist. I agree with it. I like South Florida as well. We're going to be back. We're done with these four plus four <laughs> games, play-in games, whatever you want to call them. When we come back, it's for real. It's the big dance. Teams that already are in and got their bracket matchups. We're going to take a look at a couple games for Thursday's opening round. I guess it's actually the second round now. <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the opening round anymore. He's Steven Over. I'm Marco D'Angelo. Hey, check out pregamevideos.com. Carry on the conversation. Uh, all of the uh, video notes will be posted. All of the videos will be in one spot and we'll have videos all week long uh, with the games right through Saturday's games and Sunday NBA. So check it out at pregamevideos.com.